Welcome back to my kit room and today I'm going to be doing an overview of the different types of tents that I have used on all the different adventures I've been on. Now obviously I'm inside so I can't set up all the tents so what I'm going to do is show a picture of each of the tents and then talk about it just to give you an idea of all the different varieties of tents out there and uh, hopefully this will help you choose which tent you need for your adventures. Now, first up is the Van Gogh Nitrolite 200, which looks like this. Now, this is the tent I used for running the Americas. It weighs in at 1.76 kilos and it was priced at 550 pounds. So it is an expensive tent. Unfortunately, I don't think they make this tent anymore, so I'm going to recommend a different tent, which is the Xenon Ultralight 2 Plus. Now, the difference is that the Xenon is 2 kilos versus this being 1.75, but the good thing is it is priced at £380, which is a lot cheaper than this one. Now, the reason I like these two tents is because of the way that they're kind of laid out. You have the sleeping area, which sleeps two people very comfortably, and then at the front, you have like a porch where you can keep your bags, you can shelter, you can um, just kind of have a, a, just an area separate from the sleeping tent, which is incredibly good in bad weather. Now I used it to park my stroller inside, which for me gave me security when I was camping in some pretty remote and sometimes a little bit sketchy places. The next tent I'm going to talk about is the Van Gogh Helium Ultralight 1. Now this is not in the original bag. That bag somehow got lost uh, when I lent it to someone, but that is water under the bridge. This tent looks like this. Now I've used this tent for uh, running the Scottish Isles, the Three Peaks, it's been taken to Iceland, it has done a lot of adventures and it remains one of my favourite tents. I prefer, if possible, to have a tent over a bivvy just because I feel that it gives you better protection and it gives you uh, the ability to sort your kit out uh, a little bit more securely, especially if it's raining. Uh, it allows you to sleep properly, which gives you kind of a better chance for recovery, which gives you a better chance for performing, which means you enjoy your adventure more. So normally, if I can get a lightweight tent, I will use a lightweight tent. Now this one is uh, 1.06 kilograms, which is really not very much. Now what I normally do is take the fly sheet and the inner tent and stuff them into my backpack and then have the poles strapped to the side of my rucksack just so the, it's kind of easier to pack. Uh, this tent is 340 pounds. So it is a quite an expensive tent, but it is really, really good and really reliable. The next tent I'm going to talk about is the Van Gogh Mountain 2. Now this is a much bigger tent. So this tent weighs in at 3.42 kilos so it's a lot heavier but this tent is built to be able to, to kind of withstand high winds cold environments rugged places i've taken this tent to mongolia i've taken it to uh, aconcagua and used this at 6,000 meters and it is a great great tent it's really easy to set up and okay, the 3.42 kilograms is quite heavy. However, when I was on all those adventures, I could split the weight of the tent between two people. So you're only carrying just over one and one and a half kilos each, which isn't really that bad. Um, it is a more expensive tent. It comes in at 650 pounds. Uh, but if you are doing high altitude or really exposed camping, you're gonna need a tent that is designed to give you the protection in those environments. And this is a picture of this tent uh, on Aconcagua. Fantastic tent, highly recommend. Now, this is, anyone who's been to one of my talks will realize that this is the tent that I, I kind of think is the most versatile and I love. 
and it comes, it's been on the most adventures with me. This is the MSR Hubba Hubba NX2 Man Tent and it looks like this. I have used this for cycling across Australia, the Heyduke Trail and other adventures and I just love it because it weighs in at 1.72 kilos so it's really not that heavy. Uh, it's a two-man tent. What this has as an advantage across other tents is that this one is a standalone tent so you don't need to have it pegged into the ground. So when I was cycling across Australia I used it on a concrete floor uh, of a bus shelter. So it just gives you that versatility that if the ground is hard you don't need to, to stick it into the ground. Uh, it is uh, quite expensive, it's £445, but for a tent of this capability and this specification, it, it's fully worth it and uh, it's going to be something that you're going to be able to use again and again and again. Uh, there is a choice of a one-man, I always go with the two-man because I think it's only a little bit more weight and it gives you the flexibility to take friends with you on your camping trips. I absolutely adore this tent and uh, yeah, can't recommend it enough. Brilliant. Uh, on Iceland, I use this. This is the Rab Solo Element. This is a tarp. Now, it does look tiny and cute. However, one of the things you've got to kind of bear in mind is to use this, you also need to have your hiking poles, which you're probably going to have anyway. Um, you want to have hiking poles which are variable uh, because I tried to use it with my uh, carbon running poles and it just was a little bit difficult. So you want that variability, uh, if that's a word, in the uh, height of your poles. But then you're going to need to have a ground sheet to go with this. So that adds a little bit of extra weight and yeah, this comes in at 310 grams which is super light and it's super small but then you're going to add on a ground sheet and you're going to add on your poles and you you're still going to be exposed you're not going to be as warm unless you're doing something like a one night you're running in a race or something an overnight race i would go with a one-man tent either the van gogh uh helium which i was talking about earlier or what i'm going to talk about next but anyway this is an option. It was, it did the job admirably when I was running across Iceland. This is a picture of it in Iceland. And if you're going to go for a bivy, then this is a, uh, a tarp. This is a very, very good option. Now, this is a tent I haven't actually used yet. Uh, I bought it for an adventure that was then cancelled. Uh, so it is still yet to be used. I don't have any photos of it, but this is the MSR Carbon Reflex One. Now this is a one-man tent, which it weighs 688 kilograms. Now that's including the pegs inside. Now it is a very minimalistic version of the Hubba Hubba uh, and it's great, it's got carbon poles, which you have to be careful with because carbon can break very easily. So you just have to be very careful when you're putting it up. But like lots of tents and lots of other equipment, the lighter it gets, sometimes the more fragile it gets, you just have to look after it a little bit more. But I'm really looking forward to using this because it weighs nothing. And I'm thinking for cycle touring, this is going to be a good option because you can fit it onto your handlebars or maybe even along the top rail, or the under the top rail of your bike. Uh, again, if I was going to pack this, I'd probably take the poles out, store them separately and stuff the rest of the tent somewhere else. Anyway, this is a good option. It's about £440, so it's again not cheap, but when you're looking for ultralight, you are going to be spending a little bit more money. So, these are all the tents that I have. If you're just looking to go camping and you just want a nice good tent, I am going to just say go and buy an MSR Hubba Hubba NX2. It's a fantastic tent. It just basically, it ticks all the boxes and as an investment, this is the one I would go for at the moment. I hope this has been useful. Any questions, just let me know. And as always, all the details of the tents are below.